at 11. Yo, bro, Ned. Keep counting that cash, yo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let me start with saying this You wanna mess a joke? Your Nas have a fucking death wish oh. To get wrapped up, take mouth, tossed in a ditch uh -huh. I don't give a fuck, dumb fuck, you know what time it is That's that homie, yeah, the road that gets lonely All these fake fucks acting hard, trust me, they are funnies In this other fucking faggot, he reminds me of a maggot If I ever see the cake, boy, I'm turning them into a faggot I'ma keep my balls sagging, that's that, I keep it dangin' Whipping it up, movie you're making, spitting five off in Jamaican Cause yeah. less about your stories and the way you talk is boring 20% of them Damn. in the chairs getting drunk or doing Tony uh -huh. Tell that got come here, boy, and nibble on the cop Tell that faggot, young Republican, I see him's getting shot And for everybody, yes, you know we ain't gonna make it pop It's just a matter of time, we're all gonna be sitting at the top Play a what? Yeah, everybody love Joe Cronin But before the fame, nobody ever noticed nobody. Now he's on top where he belongs, making shows almost every night I was long, uh -huh. drinking whiskey and always sang a song Ladies and gentlemen, it's the AW Review. I got my headset on finally. Oh my god, it took me forever. There we go. What's up, everybody? My camera went down. I had to fix it. Yo, what's up, chat? AW Dynamite Wednesday night. Interesting show tonight, man. I did not expect that out of Daniel Bryan. Let me tell you that. I did not expect DB to go uh, to go a little bit heel here. Did not expect that. I got to be honest. And I'm okay with it. It just almost felt like he was like not fully into it. That was the only thing that I was like. That was a little weird. You know, I want hemp belt Daniel Bryan. I want Brian when he's just a real son of a bitch and he got the hemp belt and he's telling everybody how they suck or whatever. I don't know. But uh, it was pretty good uh, still. And they obviously need heels. And, you know, Daniel Bryan was probably like, oh, you know, we need we need a heel. You know, Kenny Omega is probably going away for a little bit. We don't know how long uh, with this injury situation he's got going on. So yeah, I didn't you know didn't see that coming, but it was pretty interesting, I guess. Um, I still feel like you know, like Hangman Page, almost like he needs the hype train in a way of the Dark Order, but you know, I don't know, man. Maybe it's just like the old school in my head that makes me think that you know Hangman Page should have been this bastard heel. Like mid card heel guy, but instead he's just sort of the hero face. But people like him, man. And I, I I think I like him. You know, I think if I was live at an event, I don't even know what cowboy shit is, but I just want to be a part of it. You know what I mean? Like I want to drink a beer in the front row like a real scumbag, and I want to just like do cowboy shit. You know what I mean? So like I get it. I just want to say cowboy shit or like let's do cowboy shit. I don't even know what that is. Cowboy shit could be like molesting a cow behind the barn when no one's looking. I don't even know, but I, I want to do it just because it sounds cool. So I get it, you know. So I don't know. Daniel Bryan, we need more heels. I, I don't. I'm surprised it's DB. I would have thought maybe CM Punk could be a heel. But, you know, maybe that, you know, even Daniel Bryan thought, hey, listen, I'm I don't know, whatever. He maybe volunteered for it. Maybe it was a situation with Kenny Omega being injured. Whatever it is, they need more heels, so maybe this will work. Or maybe Daniel Bryan's not quite a heel. He's just kind of being a prick right now, and he can flip right back to easily being a face. It's not like he, like, you know, beats someone up outside with a crowbar or something like that. You know what I mean? It's just like he's talking some shit. So, eh, it works, I guess. I'm not the biggest Hangman fan, I'll be honest. Probably still cheer for... Daniel Bryan, I feel like I would cheer for Cowboy shit if Cowboy shit was facing somebody that sucked, you know, that I really didn't like. But the fact that he's facing DB, you know, or, or Brian Danielson, oh, God, am I calling him Daniel Bryan? My bad. Uh, Brian Danielson, uh, you know, makes me think that, I don't know, it just doesn't, I don't know, I just don't get that crazy about it. But the Dark Order is like this, the big manager face in the back like the cheerleader hype team for hangman page instead of being out there alone 
<clears throat> he's got this big hype train behind him, I guess. A little weird, but, you know, in a way it works. I don't know how much you guys think it works, but I, I, I think it works well enough. But, hey, it is what it is, man. He's all right. Daniel Bryan comes out. We find out he's a fa he's a heel, basically. And Aubrey Edwards drives me nuts as a referee. Bryan is uh, in a match with the Evil Uno. He beats him, obviously. Interesting to start the show that way. So that was fairly interesting to start the show with those promos and then a match with Daniel, Bryan Danielson. Um, I thought it was an okay start. It was, guess, you know... Almost night after WrestleMania, like, kind of. Not really. Not quite that level at all, really. But you know what I mean? Like, a night that felt like it was a relaunching, an interesting relaunching event. So I, I thought the opening was a 7 out of 10, a nice opening, pretty decent promo stuff from Brian Danielson. Then a pretty okay, like, promo from MJF in the back. The funny thing is MJF comes out later, and he cuts like a super promo, dude. He cut a great promo out in the ring later on, MJF did. But he cut I mean he cut a decent backstage promo, but there was but seriously what he did out in the ring was even better. But this was pretty good too. I proved every single one of you wrong. I got all <coughs> of your cute little mark chants. And guess what? I I loved every single second of it because while you virulently, while you viscerally hate my guts, hate my guts, you had no choice. You had no choice but to admit just how damn good I really am. Darby Allen, I just beat you with a headlock takeover. And right about now, I'm real excited to go to Norfolk, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Who knows what's next on the horizon? for one of the best wrestlers in the world. Who knows what's next for the man with the best right hand in all of professional wrestling. My name is Maxwell Jacob Friedman, and I'm better than you. And now you have no choice but to admit it. That was pretty fire right there. Now, now, now that was pretty good, right? But it was just kind of like a run-of-the-mill, really good backstage promo. Like, pretty good probably probably will never listen to that promo again but it was good but what he did in the ring later when cm punk came out before cm punk came out that was really good man that promo was fire and then he referenced 2024 the bidding war and he was talking about his con basically he was saying my contract's up in 2024 and wwe's gonna try to get me and uh, AEW's gonna try to keep me and i'm gonna make a bunch of money and there's gonna be a war for my contract and uh, he believes that, and, he, and now he said it. I mean, we all thought about that and said it. And uh, now we know he believes that, and he wants to talk about it. So that's very interesting. Using that real-life scenario here uh, was pretty fucking awesome. So I thought that was really smart of them to do that. thought MJF's promo there was really good. So great stuff uh, there from MJF. Uh, you know, Eddie Kingston in the back was pretty good in the little interview that was going on. And, you know, at this point, we're 30 minutes in AEW already. I know that I'm not... See, I'm not breaking things down, like, piece by piece by piece by piece. I don't really do that. And sometimes I do, but, you know, in, tonight I don't feel that there was anything piece by piece that I, I need to break down or that I wanted to break down. Um, but, you know, I'll just give... I just like to give you the points that really stick out to me, um, you know, tonight. And uh, and there's the dono link. I pinned it. I see some donations coming in. I'm going to go to the donos. Uh, in just a second here, because I do see them popping. And if you guys want to donate, the link is down below in the description box. All the donation amounts should be listed. There's a few new ones that I, I may have forgot to put up there. Um, and if I did, uh, please let me know that I'm a moron, and I will try to fix them. And you would think I would know them, but I might have forgot by now. We'll figure it out. Um, but the link's down there. Feel free to drop some love, support the show, support the channel, all that BS. And uh, I will be talking a little bit about non-wrestling stuff over on Corrupted. It's been something that people have asked for uh, for a while, and uh, we will, you know, we will give you that. Uh, we will give that to you. So, um, let's see here. Uh, oh, there's the button to donate. All right, we got Ryan the Heel coming in. What's up, Ryan? Oh, Ryan just dropping a dollar to say hi. 
Thank you, Ryan. 99 cents, Ryan. Wayne Gretzky on steroids. Uh, Ryan the Heel, thank you, sir, for the support as always. You sexy beast, Ryan the Heel. S I will S eat you. S Super chat party. <laughs> Here's Alex Oli. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Hangman's title reign doesn't feel right. I would have hot Omega beat Page, then do Omega versus Danielson, no time limit. Danielson goes over. Omega Seven tenths tonight. Well, Omega is hurt right now, so he can't wrestle, um, I believe. If the rumor's true, Omega's out for... Kenny Omega is out for oh, a little bit, if the rumor's true. I don't know how long that is. I don't know if it's three months. I heard it was minor shoulder surgery or some kind of minor surgery. Three months. Dude. So, I don't know. Oh, oh shit. What if oh, the turkeys shit. hate us? What if they flayed us? Oh, it's the Soundwave 92! they killed us? And ate our children? What if the turkeys ate us? What if they filleted us? Oh man! If the turkeys ate us. Oh my God! It's almost if Thanksgiving. They had to hate us. Thanksgiving was a little bit different. Instead, the turkeys ate us. They gobbled us apart. But first, they'd eat our nuts, and then they'd eat our butt. The turkeys ate us. What if, what if? Yeah, the turkeys. What if the turkeys ate us? The turkeys ate our balls. The turkeys ate our dicks. The turkeys ate our cunts. The, the turkeys, turkeys ate our bricks. The turkeys ate our wives. The turkeys ate our tits. The turkeys ate everything and fucking do all it is. Ooh, 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 ooh. If Danielson is turning heel for his match with Hangman, then I hope he becomes that uber environmental vegan heel he was a few years back. Well, that he already also, he basically Jay did it. looked real good in the main event. Guy hasn't lost much of oh. a step. Not a bad show tonight. Seven tenths. Yeah, pretty solid, pretty solid show tonight. Uh, some people were upset about Lethal losing, you know, but I, you know, I just think he was here to, uh, you know, help Sammy Guevara out, main event, you know, that sort of thing. I think he'll get some wins uh, back probably later, um, and then continue to try to, you know, sort of promote uh, the younger talent and things like that. Uh, you know, I would think that that's probably where they're where they're going with it. You know, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but. You know, that's that's what it seems like. Maybe, I mean, eh, yeah, I could be wrong. I mean, who knows? What the, I, I think that's what they'll do, though. You know? Um, Let me see what else we got. Uh, yeah, I see that. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, listen. I thought Jay Lethal looked good. A little spotty in the match. It was, I mean, it was a little bit of a spot match. Some people thought that. I noticed it. Uh, but I thought it was good overall. I thought it was pretty good. It's interesting. Virginia was quiet again tonight. This was another crowd that, for whatever reason, some of the southern states at, or some of the mid, I don't know what it is, but some states seemingly the promos don't pop them really, and some of the wrestling doesn't pop them. But when they get this crazy New Japan style or Young Buck style, the crowd blows up for it for whatever reason sometimes. Now, I've noticed other places they really pop for the promos more. And yeah, they like the matches too. And they like them a lot. But there are some crowds recently that I've noticed the crowds are pretty quiet. Unless the match has certain things that go down, like car crash moments. And then the crowd wakes up and pops huge. Like tonight, it was in the Leo Rush match that the, the crowd came alive. Probably the loudest the crowd got all night. If you guys are, are we on, can we be... Can we be real about that or, or try to you – know, I don't even be real. I mean, can we, like, fact check that? Can, can someone give me your opinion on how loud the crowd was tonight? Because some people thought the crowd sucked tonight, but I thought the crowd was the loudest tonight in, 
that I noticed. I mean, maybe I wasn't exactly listening with headphones in my ears or with the cra- with the volume cranked, but I had the cra- the the volume at a mid level. Sometimes I watch with a louder level, but I just didn't notice the crowd really exploding or getting that hyped until sort of the middle of uh, that match. You know, that maybe there was something else. Virginia's a wrestling hate state. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But, I mean, they were fired up for that moment in that match, though. So, like, you know, it's just it's just what they decided to cheer for. But still, a good, I mean, still a decent crowd in a way. You know, to, in a way, I mean, it's better than, you know, I mean, nothing was too crazy tonight. I mean, I, I would I would have been fired up for Ishii, dude. I love Ishii. I love him. I think he's great. I don't I don't really watch a ton of New Japan anymore that much, but he's a guy that like I don't know why I just like that guy. I mean, there's other guys in New Japan that some people get fired up about and they flip out. And they're like, "Yeah, here he comes." And I'm like, "Yeah, you I mean, yeah, he's known, but I don't really care that much." But Ishii, man, I don't know what it is, but he's he's a guy that I really enjoy. I always enjoy that guy. He's like a goddamn tank. It's like the tank abbot of New Japan. Um, and so, yeah, so, like, I kind of got fired up for Ishii, and I was, like, I was hoping the crowd was going to, like, fire up for him a little bit as he left, but, you know, they kind of were just like, all right, we're tired now, and they didn't really care for the strong style, but they really liked the flip-floppy, like, crazy, you know, they, they seemed to like that, and so for whatever that means, whatever that reason, I don't know, shout out to CJ Rella for being a $25 producer on my Patreon, man, what's up? 69 likes down below. Look at that. You know what that means. Time to sucky sucky. God damn it. Let's go. Get fucking scared, bro. Um, So then, you know, at this point, you know, and by the way, the butcher, bro, or the, no, it's the butcher. Dude, the butcher looked like a fucking psycho. Did anybody, like, what is he, like, has anyone know? like, what is the butcher doing here? I love it. I love that he looks nuts. Like, his legs are insanely long. He's got huge knee pads. He's getting, like, chubby as an older guy, even though he's ripped and could break me in half. So his thighs are getting a little milky looking. And his back is starting to, you know, cave into his fucking hips. He's got tattoos all over in random places, seemingly. Like, create a wrestler number 17. Then he's got long-ass fucking burly hair, but he's completely bald middle of the way forward of his head fucking love the butcher he looks like a fucking asshole and i love it i love that <laughs> i love that he just looks like a complete fuckhead and by the way on 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 twitter i couldn't help myself but i said uh i said the butcher looking like sid the snake austin <laughs> dude the butcher looks like sid the snake austin like what is this i love it i love the butcher like it's so fucking terrible that it's awesome like, look at this, bro. What the fuck is this? I love it. Dude, you could make him the world champion. I'd believe it. Because he's nuts looking. Like, I mean, if you called him the butcher and you made it, like, I, I, I'm willing I'm willing to bet that if the, see, I actually like how he looks now. I like that he looks completely fucked up. You know, and, and I almost wish, you know, he could cut a promo and be like, you know what they said to me? They told me years ago that if I just stopped drinking, if I stopped doing drugs, and I stopped abusing my body, that I could have been an Adonis, that I could have been a world champion. They would have put me right to the forefront and put me in title matches because of how I looked. I don't give a fuck how I look. I care about how I feel. When I'm hurting people. And hurting people makes me feel good. Hurting myself makes me feel good. And tonight, I'm going to eat your freaking heart out in that ring. And when I'm done, and I beat you, and I go to the back, and I do, and I make some bad decisions involving my body's health. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't give a shit about my own body. Can you imagine what I'm going to do to yours tonight? Like that sort of thing. Like I think it works for him. I like make this guy the world champion at some point just for fun. Like I would love it. 
And I know that, like, if it was 10 years ago and the guy was, like, getting in crazy shape, he could really be, like, uh, the world champion, like, Sid Justice or Sid or Psycho Sid or somebody like that. But I say fuck it. Like, I like this look. I like this look of just, like, white trash fuck. Like, bring it on, bro. Flat ass, like, nine tattoos, probably, like, of white supremacy. Um, you know, I'm just kidding. I'm sure he wouldn't be, they wouldn't even let him in AW if that was a good, but you know what I mean? Like just white supremacist tattoos, fucking gigantic knee pads, fucking tattoos all over his body, bald head, but long mullet, beard, milky thighs, broken hamstrings and broken dreams. Smells like fucking beer. Jack Daniels, piss, cigars, crack, and a fat woman that he that he bangs every night and then doesn't shower. I love the butcher. I love this guy. Legs longer, like huge legs, like disproportionate to the rest of his upper body that's caving in on itself from being too tall and having scoliosis or whatever the fuck. I love it. I love the butcher. Okay, I, I like I I want more of the butcher. I fucking love this guy. This guy looks like a nutcase, and I love it. And I can't I can't stop saying enough about him. And people think, oh, he's making fun of him, or oh, he's just joking. Like, and it's like I am making jokes, but I'm serious. This guy's fucking fire. He looks like a he looks like Jake the Snake Roberts, like. Decided that he wanted to look like Sid Justice instead of Jake the Snake Roberts. Like, bro, look at that mustache. Look at that mustache. Look at that mustache. What kind of a weird fuck has a mustache that looks like that? That mustache is insanely huge. Are you seeing this? Look at this thing. He's got more hair on his... Fu Manchu, I mean, this is like a super Fu Manchu than at the top of his head. What the hell? Bro, are you serious? Bro, look at this guy. Dude. I love the butcher, dude. Look at this guy. Like, how is the, how is he... Like, look at this guy. It's it's like he look. And by the way, did he age like fifteen years in the last six months? Did the butcher age fifteen years in six months? Look at him. It's like I swear to God, if you, I, I swear to God, like a year and a half ago, he looked like a like a crazy big guy. Now he looks like an like. An elderly guy. Like he looks like old Jake the Snake Roberts if he had never gotten fat but was still in shape. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Look at him. The butcher. Bro, I love him though. I don't even know. I should research how long this guy's been wrestling for and find out. Because it I don't know how old he is. Let me find out how old he is, because he looks like he's fucking seventy. And he and yet he doesn't at the same time. The butcher actually looks in really good shape. So if the butcher is really old, right, then he looks like he's in really good shape for an old person. But if he's really young, then or if he's fairly young, he looks like a a, a de decaying young person. So it's one of those things. And I believe his name is Andy Williams. Or is he getting sick and I and we don't know about it? Or was he sick recently? I'm not trying to be mean here. I'm being dead serious. And well, I was joking around a little bit, but like this is him not that long ago. You know what I mean? This is him uh This is him just a few months ago or a year ago rather. I wonder if he got sick. Like he doesn't, that does not look the same to me. Huh. I'm actually starting to wonder, like, I was making kind of a joke out of it, like, he, but he, 
I wonder if something's wrong. I didn't think about this. Oh, he It's almost like he aged 10 years out of nowhere. You know what I mean? This is this is this is from June of last year. He looks Yeah, man, he just looks different. I don't know what I'm not sure what it is. I don't know what it is. But he looks like he aged 10 years. Now, I mean like I'm He I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm crazy. I mean, look at me. I mean, what am I? Who am I to talk? I mean, I shave. I had to shave my face recently, and I mean, I look like I aged seven years or three years or something. You know, recently, so it happens. But he just looks skinnier. I mean, maybe he just got in shape and lo- now looks bizarre, because he actually was getting too big before, right? Probably too big. Look at him here. Here, here's what he looks like here. See that belly? Look at that belly. He, he looks a lot better in the, in the, in the midsection. Look at his midsection now. Look at that midsection. It's much flatter. It's like he worked out really hard or, or something happened to him. Maybe someone's answered this in the chat for me and looked, done the research. He has Ric Flair blood. He was out for a while. Yeah, he was. <clears throat> the butcher is also known as Andy Williams, guitarist or popular hardcore metalcore band. Every time I die, he—I didn't know he was the guitarist for Every Time I Die. Are you serious? I know it. I—I did not know about that. That's crazy. Okay, let's see here. <clears throat> yeah, he's forty-three years old. I mean. See, that's the thing I'm saying, man. For 43, he looks like he's 60 or 50. You know, he doesn't that doesn't look 43 right ne- right there. He's actually in really good shape cuz he lost that weight that he had, but he looks, man, he looks 48 or 58 or something. But he's 43. He's 6 years older than me. I don't know. Yeah, every time I die since 1998. Oh, my God, dude. I did not know that was him. Holy shit. That's crazy. I love that guy. That's fire. I had no idea, man. A lot of respect to Andy Williams, man. Oh, my God. That is Andy Williams. I had no idea. What the hell, bro? Yeah, he just looks really, like, old in the ring. I don't know. Huh. I don't see any news. I'm trying to find news on that, you know, he was hurt or, you know, that he's got sick or... Oh, he suffered a hand injury. The butcher suffered a hand injury. Yeah, we knew about an injury, but that's not what... I don't know. But why would he lose so much weight? I don't know. It was for... I mean, it looks like it's good that he lost that midsection weight. The reason why I'm breaking apart what he looks like so much is I keep thinking maybe there's something to it. Oh, yeah, we got a new subscriber, yeah. Yo, Tova. Freak out. What's up, brother? Let's do this. Topher, thank you for subbing to the channel, man. Hope you hit that like button down below, dude. I'm going to have some more videos tomorrow uh, on wrestling, a lot of Q&A stuff and a lot of rumor stuff that I'm going to get into. And some non-wrestling stuff, too. We'll get into the, the Rittenhouse trial, the Ghostbusters coming out tomorrow. Basically, people kind of not... I mean, dude, Jeremy Johns gave the Ghostbusters the same rating that he gave Ghostbusters 2016, which is weird. That's I find that hard to believe that it's as bad as the, as the woman one, but Jesus. Matt Hardy got waffled when they dove out of the ring. I thought he just... I don't know why, but I laughed at the way Matt Hardy sold those uh sold that off the top rope uh dive 
I don't know why, man, but it, it made me laugh. I thought it was funny. Thanks for subbing, Tover. Uh, but, yeah, we're halfway through Dynamite at this point, it looks like. The women, uh, you know, Britt Baker cut a promo. I couldn't stop staring at the girl all the way to left. Looks like my little lass oh. needs a shaving. <laughs> Pico here. Hangman needs needs chance. Bret Hart was mid-card until he beat Ric Flair for the belt. Yeah, Piper smiling down on MJF. I'm taking other side on Flair and Becky. Ric Flair jealous of her. He banged hotter gingers in Salty Motel. Omega returns his face versus Cole. Yeah, that's what it feels like. It feels like Cole's going to Alec Baldwin shot young Dolph. Jesus. Um, it feels like uh, it feels like Adam Cole's going to turn or they're going to turn on him. And there's going to be I, – I, I said they should call themselves the New Era. The New Era or if they can't call themselves New Era because of New Era copyright, The Era, Ultimate Era. Looks like, like my that. little lass needs a shaving. The sound wave. The butcher lost weight because he was out with a hand injury for a few months. He okay. apparently got on a diet plan, but he looks like AF. Reminds me of Jake the Snake a lot, but instead he gained male pattern baldness. Yeah. Guy might have trimmed too much weight. Yeah, I mean, right now, right now, Jake DeMarco's trimming too much weight. Poor guy keeps losing weight. Now they're like, stop. First it was good, you lost weight. Now it's, uh oh, stop losing weight. Soundwave92, man, thank you for the $3. Yeah, okay, so it is the hand injury, but uh, damn, man, he lost a lot of weight for a hand injury. I mean, I guess you can't lift. You can run, right? I guess you can run with the hand injury. But damn, man, he lost a lot of weight. Especially Rotten Tomatoes, they're a joke. Yeah, they are a joke, no doubt about it. See, I'm looking at the Ghostbusters movie as a big nostalgia thing, like a love letter, you know what I mean? So, you know... I'm, I know I'm going to be disappointed that instead of telling a better story, they're going to just kind of be like member, member berries, member berries, member berries. And I know that's what's going to happen in the new Ghostbusters. So that stinks. But I'm OK with that. The two movie, the two original movies are what they are, especially the first one. And they'll never be that kind of comedy and humor really replicated. This is definitely going to be a Stranger Things you know, member berries, Ghostbusters, like th sort of movie. So I, I'm I'm prepared for that. I'm prepared for just like, hey, did you watch the first two movies? Well, remember, yeah, you do because you just watched them and and you've seen them. Here's here's that thing from that. Here's that thing from that. So I, I'm basically prepared for the member berries movie, and if that's what it is, and you know, fine. I'm fine with that. You know what I mean? It's a love letter. I mean, if it's a love letter, that's okay. I, fucking hair in my mouth. I'd rather a love letter than, you know what I mean, whatever they did, like pussy fart jokes and dumb shit in the in the, the women's movie, which was so awful. Everybody agrees how bad that movie was because they wanted their, oh, we're definitely doing a sequel. <laughs> yeah, okay. It was so bad. Um, So now they get what they want. They get a female child lead to be the hero person so they like double down you know in a way uh but they got what they wanted i guess through member berries so it's okay so you know i'm going in expecting just a basically not a crazy good story of a new story but more of a just remember this and member berries and if that's what i get i'll probably say seven out of ten cool i guess you know it's not going to be the original stuff that's it which unfortunately i wish they had you know, done some, done, you know, figured out a way to sort of get back to that humor and tone of the first ones, but it, it won't do it. We'll talk about that on the other channel, Corrupted uh, Nation. Joan confused Becky feuding with Charlotte. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think they're trying to go for realism. I think they're shooting on each other, and I think they're just sh basically reacting to each other's shoots. I, I think that that's what it is. Um, the Blade credits AEW for helping him deal with recent mental health issues. So the Blade had mental health issues recently, and he credits uh, anxiety and AEW. Man, what's with everybody? You know, and it could be the pandemic. Everybody's getting anxiety. Everybody. I mean, dude, even grown men who are who are not millennials are not like boot like younger people. Like, grown men who are 38, 35, 40, 
are getting these more panic attacks and anxiety than ever, ever before because of the pressure of living up to life and being able to take care of them and their families and, you know, succeeding. And, you know, people have needed help more than ever with stuff and and things like that. And I think that's part of it in the pandemic and certainly wrestlers. It's kind of like, well, what do you do if your career doesn't work out? You know, it's kind of like me, you know, it's like, what do I do if my YouTube career doesn't work out or, or it ends, which it kind of has a little bit. It's part time. So you got to think when I started YouTube in 2013, I just, you know, or two, I started YouTube in 07, but you know what I mean? When I started this in 2012, 13, I was like, this is going to be fun. This is just for fun. It's just my side thing to do for fun. Cause I like radio and podcasting. This is my thing. And then in 2015, when it became a part-time job on the side of my real job, I put all my I put all my effort into my real job and I put a little effort into this. And then when I got laid off in 2017, you know, I uh I put when I got laid off of my job in 2017, I put all my energy into this. And I formed a show and shows that were you know, some of the best 4 years I think many YouTubers under a hundred thousand subscribers have ever had. I think. I think, as far as a YouTuber under a hundred thousand views, I think we had some of the most successful years, maybe, uh, what you know, uh, ever, of anybody. Four years, you know, entertainment wise and and income wise. I think I had one of the most successful YouTube channels of anybody under a hundred thousand subs, or maybe under fifty thousand subs. Really, I really believe. I, I really do believe that. I think we did. I don't think anybody made as much money, and I don't think anybody, and I think you can go look it up probably, I don't think anybody made as much money, and I don't think anybody you know, got had the audience and had the comedy and the entertainment factor that we had here for those four years. It was fire. But you know, now that I've got to go back to work full time, you know, I, I shift my, you know, I really got to focus full, almost mostly on that and focus on this secondary but still do it the same way as before. So it's just switching. You have to adjust to something and switch it around a little bit. And maybe in a year, maybe something will change and I'll explode on YouTube again and I'll once again switch gears to where this is all my focus again. Let's hope that does happen because I love doing this. But the reason why I, what, there was a reason why I started this, I was using this as an analogy. Does anybody fucking remember what it was? Oh, yeah. It was so the butcher and the blade. So the, so the, the, the butcher, or the blade rather, the blade had mental health issues. And so he couldn't, you know, figure out what was going on in his own mind. You know, like, am, am I going to fail at, at wrestling? You know, if I lose this AEW job, if I don't succeed, if I don't do well, you know, I don't know where I'm going to, you know, where, where I'm, you know, he's, he's going to go back to making, you know, what, whatever it is, 30, 20,000, $30,000 a year in wrestling or less, probably less. And, that's it. You know, he's probably going to have to think about calling wrestling a quit and getting a shoot job again, you know, or having to work a shoot job as well or whatever the hell. So his anxiety probably kicked in partially because of that. It seems like from what I'm reading, but I don't know anything about his life, but I'm just guessing based on what I'm reading. And, you know, AEW wasn't using them a ton. They weren't getting the most positive feedback. They weren't getting bad feedback either. You know, the butcher and the blade, they were pretty good. I liked them as like a better as like a they're almost like a demolition type tag team for AEW like in a way, you know. I like them. I'd use them. I like I like them. I like their look. You know, I think they're serviceable for some things. And and you know, maybe that pressure, you know, got to him plus the pandemic. I don't know about his family life. And so, you know, that stuff takes a toll on you. So I'm saying that I think that that's where some of my anxiety comes from is, you know, having to make a huge adjustment, you know. I, I, I had anxiety after I left my job in 2017 or when I got laid off of my job in 2017. But my anxiety quickly went away because this show and you guys and everything I did made three times the money that my sh- my real job made even though I got laid off. So I said, well, I just got laid off, but holy shit. You know what I mean? I just got laid off of my job, but I'm making three times that on YouTube. So there was no time to get anxiety. It was just like, this is awesome. You know, but recently in the past year and a half to really the past year, past eight months, you know, as everything's kind of collapsed for me, um, I think the pressure and the idea and confusion and I don't panic set in and I get anxiety. 
So I, I think that maybe that's what it is with Butcher and, or Blade, whatever, and some of these other people in the world, you know. I don't know, or maybe it's just the fear of the virus or whatever's going on. Anyway, Daniel Bryan's uh, turn. I want to put a poll up in the chat. You know what I mean? I want to put a so I you know as far as Butcher goes or as far as Blade goes, Butcher Blade, I keep confusing him. But as far as his anxiety or his um, depression or whatever's going on with the with the Blade, is it the Blade or is it Butcher? I fucking don't even remember anymore. <laughs> um, whatever's going on with his anxiety or about wrestling or about his real life or whatever's going on, I don't know. Um, you know. At least AEW helped him with it, whatever that is, you know, whatever he's going through. And hopefully he feels, you know, that hopefully they, he feels more secure in his job. But it's like, dude, what is what, what is it? Every time someone's going to lose their job or every time someone's not used enough in wrestling or every time things aren't going the best, what what, what is everybody going to get anxiety and, you know what I mean, and get sick or oh, I've got mental health issues? It's like I can't help but think that how, how soft are we all becoming? You know, myself included. How soft is everybody becoming? Dude, you know what happened back in the day when our dads lost a job or when our dads, something bad happened usually to people's dads? When the going gets tough, the tough get going, you know, and the successful get going, and, and the people that are going to come out on top get going. But it seems like nowadays when the, when the going gets a little tough, People fold, or people have mental health issues. Oh, I got mental health, you know, and um, myself included. And that's that's why. But see, that's why I would rather talk about it and say it because I still go out and do it. When I feel like something bad's going on, I got to do something. I go out and go. Let's go. I go out and do it. I go out and work whatever thing I can work. I do whatever I can to do whatever I got to do. And, um, but I don't know, man. Like, but some people, I don't know. I guess eventually you can end up folding, I suppose. But these guys, but this is crazy to hear about, you know, that he had all these issues. But, but, but AEW helped him. I mean, how many of you guys would have a problem at work where you like your job, you like everything that's going on? Then you have a mental health breakdown, and then your company pays for it. How many companies do that? How many companies would say, "Oh, Harold, you're having a problem. You know, mentally, you're not happy with the wages you're making, and you're, you know, you you're just upset with your life, but you work here, so we're gonna pay for you to have mental health, you know, to get some counseling or whatever." How many jobs do that? You know what I mean? I'm I'm seriously asking. How many jobs do that? I don't know. I mean, it's a good thing, but it just seems like it's an epidemic going on in wrestling, but it, maybe not because it's really going all, all around in the world everywhere right now, too. But, yeah, I mean, maybe we are all soft. I mean, I'm, I'm including myself for sure in this. Like, it's we are all fucking crazy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But what I will say is that you got you to gotta go. You have got to have a place to go. You know, you got you to gotta go forward. You got to be like... All right, if I'm getting stuck over here, I'm going to go there. I'm going to get I'm going to get to there eventually. You got to have a goal. You got to set that goal and then you got to do it. And that will keep your mental health at bay usually. Just keep having goals and then hitting them. Like and if you got to lower the goals, lower the goals. And once you start hitting some of the lower goals, set a lower goal and then set a real goal, a real high goal. You know, shoot for one one thing that people don't do enough is they don't shoot for up here. So many people you know what I mean? I was recently with a bunch of 20-year-olds. And, and listen, at, at the age of 20, I didn't give a shit. I was a jack-off. I did just the bare minimum little stuff, whatever, and then always thought something will come along and save me. And something never did. Something never came along and saved me. Even in 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, I used to make YouTube videos thinking, I'm going to make a video go viral someday and I'll be just fucking famous or something. Like, no. Like, that's not. it's not going to happen. It didn't. Or maybe it will, but it won't really. And it, 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 it wasn't until that I had a clear goal of I am going to go live after every wrestling show in 2013. And I'm going to be the guy that's live after everything. No one else is doing it, really. I'm going to be the guy that does that. I'm going to be the guy that's there for you after wrestling ends. And there's only a few other people doing it, really, and not really anybody. I'm going to be the guy. I'm going to be the go-to guy. 
that does comedy and wrestling, and nobody else does that. There's, there was only two or three people that were doing, I'm super serious about what we saw on Raw tonight, and uh, whatever. So you got to have a clear goal, set the goal, and, and, and aim above it. Aim above it. You know what I mean? I, you know, I aimed for 3,000 subscribers. You know what I mean? That's what I aimed for in the first uh, six months. I was like, dude, I want 3,000 subs. That would be amazing. And I fucking ended up hitting, uh, you know, 10,000. You set goals high. The problem is when people set goals too low, the problem is they hit them. That's usually the problem. They hit them. They hit their goals. Oh, you know, I'm going to make uh, $50,000 this year. It's like, I, I need to make $50,000 this year. I'm going to do that. And then you do it. But it's like, why, no, why don't you, I mean, be realistic, but aim for 100000 aim for 200000 and be realistic about it. And realistically figure out how you really could hit that number and then aim for it, you know? But, so, I don't know. I'm the same way. I, I, I bitch a lot. What I, what I do is I just bitch out loud. Like me, I bitch out loud, but then I actually act. In real life, I act. I don't sit around and whatever. I have a family and stuff. I act in real life. Like, I, I, I don't just sit there. I mean, maybe sometimes I sit there for a second and I think about, all right, what the fuck am I going to do? But for the most part, you know, I, I go for it. But I bitch about it along the way. Like, I complain like crazy. I'll complain to anybody listen. You can fucking sit and listen to me complain for a few minutes. I love doing it. I have nothing more than I love than fucking complaining and crying about stuff. And then just, but then because when I'm done doing that, I then I boom, I have a clear headed mind because I dumped out all the poor shit and complained about it. Which is, by the way, probably what the blade went to mental went to counseling for. You go to counseling, he dumps it emotionally, dumps it to the AW counselor person, and then he's and then he's clear headed coming out of it with his ego a little bit pushed away. And uh, you know what I mean, feeling a little bit better about everything, and that allows him to get on with everything. So that's probably what that's probably what happened right there. You know what I mean? And by the way, we've completely gone off the fucking tracks here. Um, thanks to whoever brought that up. But man, Nyla Rose, no one's ever gonna just nobody can get into it. I, I no, I, I'm so listen. I don't know, dude. I, I can't even say in this climate of the world, or I mean, even J.K. Rowling can't even fucking. J.K. Rowling can't go to the 20th anniversary of Harry Potter because she made transphobic comments or whatever it was. So, like, I, I can't even say, but I'll just, I'll just say one thing. For whatever reason, you be the judge. The fans just don't accept Nyla Rose. When she is in there wrestling a woman, for whatever reason, the crowd just doesn't want to even see it I don't know what that means I support I don't support crazy and I don't support bullshit and I don't support people being mean to people if they don't know someone's gender or whatever that is but I also don't support like teasing people that like I'm not going to call you what you want to be called really like listen I'm not, if you want to be a fucking a lion if you want to be called lion cocksucker you know, I'll probably actually will call you lying cocksucker. But if you want to be called by by he or she and, and you change, I'll call you that. I'm not going to be a prick. You know what I mean? If you, I'll, you know what I mean. But if you want to be called fucking like a lion or something, I'm probably not going to do that. Probably not. You know what I mean? There's a certain extent. I'll give you the he or she or whatever because you that's what you you know whatever. But I'm not going to call you like a lion or a fucking zebra guy or whatever. That I won't do. But what I will say is. I support people that in their mind believe that they're a woman or a man when they're not when they weren't born that way. Um absolutely, like it's fine. I support it. And you want to change everything, you want to you want to feel comfortable in your body, that's awesome. I I'm totally in support of that. 100%. But the but the hard truth here is whatever reason the AW fans don't buy this. Or they don't, they don't, they don't like it. They feel uncomfortable with it. I feel like, or they don't buy it. Um, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's just. I don't know. People aren't ready for it yet. People, or or is it just Nyla Rose? Is it just her? Is it just Nyla Rose? Like that people don't get it. 
are the pe- are the people that don't get it in AEW fans going to be called transphobic people? I don't know, because uh, that's what people would get called. I feel like for it, uh, but I, I I honestly can tell you from hearing from many wrestling fans and many AEW fans, they just don't accept it, and and I'm not saying they don't accept Nyla necessarily. It, it's the combat, and, and I get it. it doesn't make any sense because. China wrestled men. Men wrestle women all the time in the indies. And that's the thing that I don't understand. So I'm just so from from a left wing leaning person's mindset, you are probably going to be called transphobic because you cheer for men wrestling women on the indies. You cheer for it. You have no problem with a guy on the indies punching women and, and wrestling them and whatever, but Nyla Rose is become a female, and you have a problem with her wrestling women. So, from a left-wing standpoint, I can sort of see what that argument is and what they're saying, but from a right-wing standpoint, I can see how many of those type of people just don't accept it. It doesn't, they don't buy it, but it's wrestling. So much weird craziness and so many crazy things happen in wrestling. How can you not accept it? But for whatever reason, they don't vibe. Or is it option number three, which is just... In our own city, in Philly, we're gritty. Yo, this whole city, we're gritty. Yo, we might eat our own... That they just don't like Nyla no matter what. doesn't matter. We eat shitty. Solid show tonight especially loved the Brian Danielson heel turn and CM Punk vs MJFT's match which should be a great promos back and forth. What do you think about Eddie Kingston vs Daniel Garcia though? Daniel Leo Rush and Dante are killing it too. Daniel Garcia, Karim Garcia. Leo Rush and Dante did pretty well tonight, Sam Skyrider. Yo, Sam Skyrider. Sam, thanks for the ocho, brother. Mucho dinero. Um, what did you say? There was something. Oh, Eddie Kingston and Daniel Garcia. I mean, yeah, Daniel Garcia's got a pretty good, pretty good on the stick. So. I almost felt like Eddie Kingston was treating him in the promo tonight like he really feels like, ah, oh, fuck, I got this guy now, fuck this. Like that's, I mean, I just didn't feel it from Eddie tonight. I felt it from Eddie when when he was talking to CM Punk. I felt it from Eddie tonight. I didn't feel it from Eddie. I I, I felt more like he was like, I gotta do this now. I guess I don't know. Like it was like it was like Eddie went right back to that side piece that he was and. That sucks because Eddie Kingston should be always at the forefront. If I was, I got to be honest, guys, if I was AEW, I would have kept the Eddie Kingston stuff going with CM Punk. I would have kept it going. And I would, I don't know, man, or maybe not because Eddie was getting cheered. So get them away from each other, I guess. Like, I don't know, but it just, I don't know. I, I, Maybe we'll get better. Maybe we'll get better. Maybe we'll get better. You know? Um, but, yeah, I, I go with option three. Going, but Thank you for the dono, uh, Sam Skywriter. I go back to option three with Nyla Rose. That I, I, I don't really think it's the, tra- it's the trans thing. I don't think it's people don't accept her. I think that's part of it. Like, I feel like that's the secondary part of it. Like, people don't buy... buy the wrestler, just just like Nia Jax in a way, you know what I mean. They don't buy Nyla Rose, you know, and, and and part of it is the booking. They've they've booked Nyla Rose like shit. They they couldn't figure out if they want to make see they they don't know what to do. They can't figure out if they wanted to make Nyla Rose the beast that's unstoppable that can destroy everybody. They don't know if Nyla Rose should be the sympathetic underdog that you know first you know, transgender woman on a major wrestling show like this to be the face. So they didn't know if that was going to be it. And then they didn't know if they wanted to make her kind of like 
the big beast woman, but she doesn't really win, you know? And they and they really bounced around between two out of three of those a lot, and then they went into the sympathetic thing, but just nobody would cheer. Just nobody was cheering her. They wouldn't do it. They still won't do it. I think that people actually like... It's weird because I, I, I think that people want to, like, kind of, like... Um, they uh, they like Nyla like they don't want to be because people aren't like shitting on her, you know. So it's like it's almost like people want to take it easy on her because they know that it's like it's got to be rough to wrestle as someone who's you know transgender woman. I think and, and she's also not doing the whole like I'm transgender like she's not doing that. So I think the crowd really, I think most of us despite what your political beliefs are about whatever, I think most of us have some sympathy for Nyla Rose about, like, you know, her being in this atmosphere, you know, going through whatever she's going through. But then there's a part of you that also just, like, resents something, you know, because people don't, you know, understand different things. And she's just so much bigger than the other women. It's hard to be that sympathetic for her as a wrestler. And she's also a lot of times just bad. Like, I don't know, sometimes bad. I, I can't explain it. But not that bad. But just whatever, everything, it just doesn't connect. For whatever reason, she doesn't connect with the crowd. At all. She went through a fucking chair tonight on a diving splash thing that was pretty cool. It's weird. It's like it's weird. It's it's almost like I kind of like her in a way. Like I, I, it's weird, but then not really. <laughs> so like I just kind of sit there quiet. So when she wrestles, I and I think that that's what almost everybody does. I think everybody just kind of sits there quiet, like they don't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? Like some people make little funny snide remarks. You know, people that would be called transphobic or whatever. But some people, um, you know, make little snide remarks. Probably make jokes about her. And then there's probably other people that are like, good for her. Good for her. But basically, the people that are in the crowd going, yeah, good yeah, good, yeah, good, for her. Good for Nyla Rose. The people that are doing that, and then the people that are making little comments like, Look at, what is she? This doesn't, this is ridiculous. You know, whatever the case is, everybody ends up on the same page. No matter what. No matter if you're left wing, right wing, or you're or extreme left or right, and, and you have a real extreme feeling about her. Whatever it is. Everybody is in agreement without knowing it that when she's performing, for some reason, most of you, 90% of you, it seems, just kind of think, uh, uh. So, and, and I bring up all that stuff because that those points are inevitably, um, the fuck is all over my keyboard? Those points are inevitably going to be brought up by people about like why people don't like her. Some people are going to say they don't like her because of that. Some people are going to say they don't like her because they, they're, they're confused about it. Other people are going to say that's why, you know, whatever. Um, so I bring up all those points to sort of try to break this down and narrow it down and figure out exactly what's going on. I And I don't 100% know. It's an interesting conversation. I don't know. But here's the thing. In the end, there are many wrestlers that don't connect with the crowd. And when you see them performing, you just don't buy it. And so it just so happens that Nyla has this, you know, unique, uh, you know, situation. But uh, I, I did the best I can to sort of break that down. And, yeah, it makes it hard when she's when she's twice other women's size. That makes her kind of the heel. So when you're twice other women's size and you have a voice of a of a man sounding ah, like she sounds crazy when she yells like Nicole Bass or whatever used to sound like that or whatever so when you're the size that you are when you when you sound like a like you have a bassy voice and you're beating up women half the size of you but you're a but you're a transgender woman so Really, nobody wants to boo that. You know what I mean? So, okay, you can't be a face. So Nyla Rose cannot be a face because she is two times the size of everyone and she sounds like crazy. 
So she can't be a face because people aren't going to cheer that. But she's a transgender woman who seems actually pleasant enough off the show on, on online media and stuff like that. She doesn't rub her LGBTQ stuff in anyone's face. So there, there's not enough hate. There, there's not enough hate from the right wing people. And the left wing people, they're bored by her too. And they don't quite get like beating up women that are two times smaller than. So everybody just sits there. You can't cheer her because she's two times the size of women and is a crazy beast. And you can't boo her because she's transgender female. So you end up with complacency in the crowd. And you end up with people cheering the other person in the match, usually, but not really that into the match because they're sort of just cheering the other person by default. And that's exactly where we're at. And she's not the greatest in the ring. She's a, she's a heavyweight type, a mid-heavyweight type that does power moves, which is okay, but it's not enough to connect with the crowd. Now, if Nyla Rose, the only way, and I have the solution for you guys, the solution to make Nyla Rose connect with the crowd is to have her cut an honest promo in the ring from the heart where she's not preaching, but she's explaining her life from her perspective. And if she were to tear up in the ring, and, and say that I know that you'll never accept me because of what I of what I am blah, blah, blah. like you might actually build a little sympathy there and then she has to be interrupted by somebody who comes down to the ring and says I've you know what I'm gonna say it and I know that in this day and age I'll probably get canceled or whatever you call it no one's buying what you are. Like, oh my, and then she and then they slap her in the face. A guy. A guy. Like imagine that slaps her in the face and then hits her with a chair and then beats her down like this like I'm talking about the rock Mick Foley at the Royal Rumble. She's bleeding. She you know, they breaks her ankle, whatever, like step steps on her with a chair. Just a horrific display and assault. And um, then she has a match with that person where she has to do crazy moves and crazy things, go in at thumbtacks and fucking hardcore and all this stuff, and she's busted open in the match, and she went through tables and ladders and shit, and she wins in the end, barely, and she's all fucked up, and she did all this crazy shit for you. The fans will cheer her. Because the fans will respect that. They'll respect that she put herself through a ladder, tables, tacks, chairs, shit. And they'll respect the promo of honesty of explaining, like, you know what I mean? That she doesn't want extra care, extra sympathy. She doesn't want to play a crybaby. Or she doesn't want to use some kind of SJW card or whatever the fuck. That she never mentions it because she wanted to do this on her own and try her best to be accepted and uh, and if that means that I'm accepted, awesome. You know, that's what I want. That's what I'd like. But if that means that I'll never be accepted, well, then I'll I'll I don't care because I live my life the way I knew I had to. And you know, that's whatever the fuck. And, and, and maybe, maybe then you could have somebody who then she would connect with the fans, and uh, that might work. Maybe. But right now, this this sort of like I'm a beast. I'm a beast. I beat people. I'm a beast. I lose. I'm a beast. I beat people. I'm a beast. I lose. Or or whatever that they've been doing to her back and forth, back and forth. That will make it just impossible to be anything but this. We don't I don't really want to cheer for her. You know? And it's and it's it's hard to balance this. And it's hard to execute what I just said a few minutes ago. And it may not be possible to execute what I just said a few minutes ago based on the world and the climate of things and stuff like that. But either way, it seems like Nyla Rose is a good person, though, off uh, outside AEW. So that's where you kind of root for something to click or something to happen, you know? 
She's got to face uh, Dan Lambert. Maybe I said Twitter. I meant to say Twitter, not Twitch. Uh, then MJF comes out and cuts a phenomenal promo. Just a fucking phenomenal promo. You know? Um, they What are people saying? What happened again in the racist comments or some sexual shit? I don't know what that means. Who's? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that is. Let's go back to the 90s. F it. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of game for that. Um, but, yeah, those are my opinions on, on it. Because a lot of people are still asking me, what can they do for Nyla? Or what can they, you know, I ask, what can they, what can they do for Nyla to make me care? Because I just don't care. When I see Nyla Rose right now, it's almost like when I watch WWE. I just think I don't care about this at all. Same thing. Nyla is a heel. Nyla is a heel. But again, like, it's just, it's a nothing heel. You know? I don't know. Maybe I'll send her this rant and she can um, use it. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I... I, I um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the other solutions are. <laughs> Did this kid in the front row call her a psycho? Good thing she didn't call her something awful. Like, imagine a kid says something bad. Like, oh, God. You a psycho. You're a psycho. Is this like a family member or somebody that knows her? A plant? You're a psycho. You psycho. You're a psycho. <laughs> oh, no. That's what the right-wing people call her. A psycho. That's fucked up. She must have some uh, conservative parents. <laughs> I'm just kidding, right-wingers. I know you, you're you not all like that. Just a few people. Just a small group of you. Maybe it is a mental thing. We're all mental. Everybody's got something mental. Um, It's pretty funny. <laughs> Oh, man, that's wild. I'm sure people say crazier shit to Nyla than that. Imagine the stuff that people say to Nyla Rose. Or maybe they don't. Maybe people are afraid to say anything nowadays, and maybe they don't say anything. See, if I was a wrestler and people were yelling mean stuff at me, I wouldn't even take it, like, personally. You know what I mean? Like... Like, look at me right now. I'm, like, out of shape still. I'm losing weight. I'm doing a good job. But I'm out of shape. I can't grow a beard, you know, when I try to. Um, you know, I've got a – right now my face looks like a baby, chubby baby. You know, if someone yelled from the crowd, like, you know, you chubby baby face fuck. Like, I'm gl I hope you're – I'm glad your dad died. You know, somebody knows that my dad died when I was eight, you know. Somebody yelled from the crowd, like, Yo, fuck you. Like, I'm glad your dad's dead. Like, your dad died when you were a kid, you loser. Like, I don't know why. I, I don't. I'm like, damn, that guy knows that? That's fucking crazy. Like, I'm not that mad about it. You know what I mean? I'm trying to think, though. What's the line for you guys? I mean, like, what if my, what if, God forbid, like, you know, what if my wife, what if somebody I loved close to me got sick and was something happened? What if somebody's kid, you know, got, let's say, something awful? What if somebody's kid died and someone in the crowd... It looks like my little lass needs oh, a shit. shaving. <laughs> Pico here. Question hey Joe. Hey. F. Mary. Kill? Yes. The three dead golden girls. Uh, you can't have Betty. I got dibs <laughs> and feather duster ready for cobwebs. I have mental health issues from watching Raw, as I'm now <laughs> mongoloid. Great seeing here. Oh, cheap airfare to Kenosha. Thanks for the three dollars, man. What's going on? Cheap airfare. Yeah, there's gonna be a mistrial, bro. It's gonna be nuts because they gave uh the defense saw a low a low video resolution version of what the prosecution had, and so the prosecution was able to just be like, "Yo, this is what we see," and then the defense had to be like, "Oh, we really can't argue that because that we don't really know what that is." It doesn't really look like that, but okay. But now that they, I don't know, some kind of fucking weird way to whatever. 
I was hoping that we get a verdict just so we could stop talking. It could be over, you know. You just want it to be over. I hope the judge says "fuck you" or making a decision. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Kids like you know. I don't know. We'll talk about that on my other channel. I won't talk about it here. I don't want to make people upset. Um, you know, how pretty much everybody knows how I feel about it. And I'm a guy who doesn't like. I don't. I don't really like guns. Not a big gun guy. Pretty left leaning, independent myself. Pretty pretty liberalish me. Uh, you know. I think he defended himself clearly in the video. I think the video shows it. Anytime I talk to somebody who doesn't think he defended himself, they typically don't seem to like they're crazy or like he like they didn't watch the videos or something. It's almost like they're just repeating stuff they heard. And I'm like, did you see the videos? Like, that's weird. I don't know. That's me though. I, I'm shocked. I, I'm. I actually agree with. I, you know, the kid's weird that he went there and that he wanted to help people and their businesses and put himself in that spot. Kind of weird. If I was his parents, I'd be like, "You better stay the fuck home." So I think his parents suck. If I was, if that was my son, I'd be like, "Dude, I don't. I, I know this is a noble thing you're doing, but you don't know what can go wrong. Get the fuck home. You're not fucking going anywhere." But that's me. But I still think. But fuck it, he defend. I just, I, I can't believe he's not going to get off. He should. I believe he's going to get off because I don't. I just think he defended himself as clear as day in the videos. Fucking clear. I don't know though, man. I don't want to talk about it here. People don't want to hear about that here. But I, but if you do, if you disagree, it's okay. I, I I get it. I'd love to talk to people about it too. I would I would definitely debate people about it, no doubt. Well, what do you know? We got ourselves a new member, and I got a member in my pants. <laughs> I got a member in my pants. Drew Bar, twenty four months. Holy shit! Thank you, Drew Bar. Holy jumping shit balls. Yeah, the first guy he shot penetrated a little kid's anus. So, and I know that it doesn't matter just because you want you know you can't you can't just shoot people because people are hopefully they're a pedo you know what I mean. But again, the pedo chased him and said he was going to kill him and cornered him and then he got shot. So I I really just don't feel bad. I don't understand. How anybody can feel bad for a crazy... Uh, this guy was crazy. He should have been in a mental institution. Rosenbaum should have been in a mental institution. But he wasn't. You know why? Because this country doesn't know how to lock up mentally ill people. Rosenbaum was mentally fucking ill. Insane. And he caused a shooting to happen. You know? And then the other two guys, they probably thought an active shooter was going on, and they th probably thought they were doing the right thing. These people probably thought they were being heroes by taking out Kyle, and they didn't realize that he had been defending himself. So crazy-ass Rosenbaum, Mr. N-Word Bomb, who fucking penetrated a child's anus and was just in jail and now is out of jail, and then a couple days after being out of jail is in the streets saying he'll go back to jail and he'll kill somebody, ended up causing someone to have to shoot him, that caused two other people to think there was an active shooter, and then they got shot. Fucking stupid. All because Rosenbaum should have been locked up. Don't let people out of jail when they fucking penetrate children. S -s 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 Super chat party! Oh, yeah? Joe didn't answer. F. Mary killed dead golden <coughs> girls. Oh, that's great. That's right. I'm sorry. I've actually had this question before. Uh, Mr. Pico Boulevard, how are you doing, brother? Um, and yeah, and just to give you, and, and I think I, I, I think my opinion is interesting because I'm a fairly left-leaning person, you know? I, I'm trying to be an independent guy mostly, but I am a left-leaning person. And you know, I'm sorry. Like, And so I think it matters coming from me to tell you, to reassure you that, that I believe that. A hundred percent. I'm I'm a hundred percent sure of what I of what I'm saying. All the other stuff is hearsay. Shouldn't have done this. State lines that. Whatever. Okay, that's not murder. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what actually happened. Here's what happened. All the other stuff is debatable about morals and shoulda, coulda, woulda not done whatever the fuck. All that matters is what actually happened. 
All right, let's check it out. All right, I definitely would kill this one. What's her face? I don't even remember her name. What's this one's name? Because she always was butch. She always seemed like she was very hairy and gross and very tall and has a deep voice. So I'd have to go ahead and say that I would... uh, hmm. So Rue McClanahan, I would probably... I'd probably F. Rue McClan... Right, that's her name, right? McClanahan or something? Or, or, you know, I don't know. Or, like, B. Arthur. I wouldn't... No. B. Arthur, no. B. Arthur was always, like, Arthur. Oh, girls, yeah. It's me, B. Arthur. Like, no. Ooh, no, absolutely. She had the big mole on her face. She's getting killed. She's getting killed. Um, No doubt about it. But Rue, or whatever her name is, I don't remember. Is it is it is it Roe or is it Rue? S- S- I, I I would bang her. Super chat party. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How amazing was that Tim Cast episode last night? Oh my god, that that was great, dude. They had Alex Jones, Joe Rogan, Tim, Pool, and a whole bunch of people, and they even had one of the guys from the testifying. Uh, the 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 court case. He was there on the podcast. They just had a slew of people. It was it was a really good podcast. They even argued with each other. I loved it. They kept Alex Jones in check. He would go off the rails, and they'd have to be like, "Alex, that's not what that means." The best part was when they fought about Alex Jones. One of one of the guys said that the best way to solve everything is to give make make everyone have to own a gun. So he was like, "Oh, I the." Everybody should have to own a gun. And then Alex Jones said, "Well, you can't you can't do that because that would be like indentured indentured servitude. You'd be an indentured servant or whatever." And then they were fighting about if that is true or not. So Alex was saying, "You can't force everybody to have to have a gun. That's servitude or whatever." And then the other guy was like, "That's not what that is." And then they were all were fighting about what that was, and I just thought that was funny that Alex was the one that was like, "Nah, you can't force everyone to have a gun you would almost think that he would want that but he didn't you know it's just funny the way they're arguing anyway it's pretty entertaining to me um yes and i would definitely marry betty white because uh mcclanahan right would be like tolerable to bang once you know okay we did it that was cool that was different i'm i'm out now but b arthur is marrying material you know what i mean because i feel like She'd be a pretty good wife. She's smart. She's nice and fun. She's probably also someone who likes to have a couple of drinks and get friggin' weird. And so for that reason, all those reasons, um, Betty White, I'm marrying Betty White. I'm killing B. Arthur. And McClanahan, I'm I'm just I'm toking her up one night only. You know, one night only in fucking McClanahan. <laughs> uh so there you go. Yeah, no, no B. Arthur. Can't do it. It's me, B. Arthur. Ugh. We'll talk about that stuff on the other channel. We can't talk about the pol- politics here. It's bad. Because people that don't agree with me will get mad. And I don't want to alienate people. Because I'm a fucking idiot. And I don't know what I'm talking about. So just know that if you disagree with me, you're probably smarter than me anyway. So it's, I'm a moron with a GED. Explain something to you bumpkins, although I know everything's going to go over your head. (laughs) MJF, MJF was fired tonight. party. Oh, yeah? Joe, you can't have Betty. The was the three dead ones. Oh, oh. I can't have... Oh, you said the three dead Golden Girls. God damn it. You're right. Oh, my God. Huh. I. You're right. That makes sense. Because why would they, Why would we be picking three? There's four Golden Girls. Oh, my God. Hmm. Oh, man, I guess I'd have to. 
This is becoming. This has now become rough. Who's the other one? The oldest one is that. Is the oldest one Estelle? Remember when she was like really young in those old photos? She looked fire. So Estelle. Mm. Oh, this is really hard because. Oh, my God. Mm. So I guess we got to take B. Arthur out, right? Because she, she's alive. Or Betty White out because she's Betty Betty White. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, okay. So, you know, again, you know, she's done. She's dead. I'm killing her. I guess one night in Estelle. And so I guess Mc, McClanahan. So I'm taking McClanahan. I'd marry McClanahan, I guess. Cause yeah, cause Estelle is just too old, you know. It's like, you know, too she. I mean, cause I'm assuming you're saying we're, you know, I'm, I'm having, I'm having to do them at their old age. You know what I mean? At their last age living, right? Last age lived. You know what I'm saying? But if we could go back to when they were younger, you know, it'd be a whole different thing. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, am I wrong? I can barely remember Golden Girls now. I mean, I used to watch Golden Girls when I was like four, five, six. My mother would watch that in like Days of Our Lives and other things like that, and I would see it. I would see all all that shit. I wonder if she screams. That's funny. Dude, there's times where Sarah Jessica Parker looked fire hot. Yeah, dude, I thought, dude, oh, my God. I ab I loved. I, I didn't love Sam in Sex in the City. I, I mean, I do. She's hot. Like, that chick's hot. Like, pretty cool. She's also in Star Trek Six, which is fire. I like the other girl. Who's the the like the the dark haired girl, the brunette girl? I mean, they're all kind of like weirdly hot, like in a weird way. But the chick to the far right, this girl, I loved her. I loved her, man. I was I just thought she was. I was like that girl is gorgeous. I like her a lot. But yeah, Sarah Jessica Parker, man, take that nose and. Rub it all over me. And, gir and giraffe neck. Oh, my God, bro. I love giraffe neck. You know what they should do is get these four girls back in, like, because, like, in five more years or ten more years, all these girls know, like, we can't do Sex in the City anymore. We're, like, fucking 50. Sex in the si si you know, City, that doesn't work. So get all four of these girls back from Sex in the City and relaunch Golden Girls S with these four. S Golden Girls. Super How fucking fire is that? It's a great idea. <coughs> oh, yeah? If you marry Estelle, she dies sooner you get her money. That's a good point. I doubt she made much, though. To be honest, as sad as that is. Mr. Pico Boulevard. What's up, Mr. Pico? Ooh, oh, oh. No, but uh, yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know, bro. I'm thinking about all four of these girls. They could, they could be the new Golden Girls. Hmm. The new Golden Girls. This is a great fucking idea. Now the question is, do you make it the same characters from Sex in the City? Like it's the same characters from Sex in the City. Their husbands are all dead. Right, pretty much, living together just like the Golden Girls, but they're called the show is called Golden Girls, but it is the characters from Sex in the City. That's the best of both worlds. So now it's the Sex in the City cast continues, but we don't call it Sex in the City anymore because no one wants to see four sixty-year-old women. You know what I mean? Talking about Sex in the City, it's weird. So 
Instead, it's now Golden Girl. No, no one's ever done that before. A reboot of a series with the group of a different series that is canon of that series in, in a new series that's relaunched. This is fucking unbelievable. Somebody call the fucking network. Joe Cronin's got an idea. The new Golden Girls. The new Golden Girls. Or Golden Girls of the City. Golden Girls in the City. The City's Golden Girls. This could be a good show. We're talking about, I don't even know. We're on to something here, guys. We're fucking on to something. This is fucking fire. It's a fucking fire idea. We just got to wait 10 more years for them to age, though. A little more. They got to get a little older. Or, you know, maybe like one or two of them doesn't want to do it, so you just bring in Sarah Jessica Parker, who is starting to look like fucking the Wicked Witch of my cunt. So, I mean, um... I... But... I don't know. She's looking older, right? So, I mean, yeah, another 10 years, you know. We're getting there. We're getting there. She could be B. Arthur's character, right? Sarah Jessica getting pretty old here looking. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Man, this is a great fucking idea. The new Golden Girls in the city. Oh, my God. Bro, this is why I need to be on writing teams and shit. It's fucking genius. Let's go. This is fucking fire, bro. Let's go. People are like, did I come here for a wrestling review or Joe to pitch TV shows? You are looking at the guy that checks all the boxes inside this ring on this microphone. I am easily, easily the golden age. How about that? It could be, it could be, it, forget the golden girls, forget sex in the city. Golden girls. Golden girls. Golden girls in the city. Golden, just golden girls. Wow. Oh, wait. Golden Girls was the name of Golden Girls. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with me? Most complete <laughs> pro wrestler on the planet. <laughs> Golden Showers, fuck it. I Wh am the man. Golden Showers is just a show about old women that want to be pissed on. That's fucking great. And they have a hard time finding men to do it. So they turn to Craigslist. Who will start a bidding war in the year 2024? I am the past, the present, and the future. <laughs> MJF, fire. MJF, god damn, man. I don't know. I, I love. I, see, I've always wanted to be an idea guy. In a way, I've always wanted to work at like HBO or like on a TV, whatever network, and just be able to be the guy that pitches ideas. Like, what if we did this? What if we did that? I don't want to be the writer that sits there and writes everything specifically, but I want to be the guy at the table who like is the guy who's got the team together and we're all th throwing out the ideas. And now that we got the bullet points of what's going to happen, you guys go try to write it, and then I'll give you more feedback. Always wanted to do that. It was like when I created that episode of uh, the mock episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, and then I put it up on YouTube, and then Curb Your Enthusiasm did it. I'll never forget all my friends calling me and being like, they fucking did your idea. They fucking did it. And it's like, I don't know if they really saw it or if they just came up with it because it was so whatever. Anyway, the bottom line is I always wanted to do that shit. Yeah, I wish I could. Because I, I feel like I, I suck it. I suck. Like, I have a lot of shitty ideas. I'd probably get fired because, like, I'd have, like, 90 bad ideas. And they'd be like, that was dumb. That was dumb. That was dumb. And then by the time I actually thought of a good idea, they'd be like, they, they wouldn't hear it because they'd be like, oh, you're fired. You're out of here. Get the fuck out of here. And I would have been fired and never even heard it. So can we talk about um, the chairman of AEW, like, going full Wrath of Khan with his, like, chest open right there with this weird... The fuck is this? 
What is he doing? He's in the background. Like, while MJF is cutting a promo, he's just in the background with his breasts, like, coming out of a suit jacket, eating a fucking granola bar. Like, what the fuck is going on here? I mean, it's probably one of the greatest things ever, but, like, I, I just, like, what is going on, though? Like, as funny as it is, like, can we just take a look at this photo here for a second as this guy stares down and eats a granola bar with his brown shoes and his tits coming out of his business suit? Like, I mean, looking at the fucking granola bar like a monkey stares at a dildo? the fuck is this very strange some intern saw it and stole it the Joe's idea probably what it was an intern saw it maybe I couldn't believe how down to the wording it was you know but then again you know Kramer always went in Jerry Seinfeld's fridge on right on Seinfeld didn't he so I think that was kind of the joke, like, you're going to go in my fridge? You know, that was, I don't know. But it was very, it was almost word for word my skit, and that was crazy. I, I remember people got in a fight with me about it. They were commenting, like, you're a liar. You fucking copied their scene and said they stole your fucking idea. And I was like, okay, I have the VHS tape of when I filmed this. And the VHS tape, if you looked at the digital code and looked at the VHS tape, you could literally like carbon date the VHS tape and prove that the VHS tape contains this footage from the year 2003. And yet this skit on this show didn't happen until the year 2007 or 8. I think it was 2008. Or maybe it was later, 2008 or 9 or 10 or 11. I don't know, whatever. Anyway... And it was only and it aired one year after I put it up on YouTube. I put it up on YouTube, and then about six months to eight months later, it was in the real show. So the people were saying that I was lying, but it was like, well, but I have the tape, and the tape proves that I did that skit in 2003, and it wasn't in the show till 2008 or whatever the fuck. So it's like I know that I'm not lying, so I could prove it like in court <laughs> if I had to. Because it's easy to look at the forensics of a VHS tape. Um, and it's easy to look at when it was recorded and whatever else. And I was in high school. Graduate, I, I left high school in 2003. So, yeah. It was just stupid. But anyway, the point is, like, pretty sure they ripped me off. But also, it's it makes sense. Like, it was a, it made sense for a joke in that show. So it could just be coincidental, you know. I don't know, but a lot of ideas that I've come up with or thought of, you know, I see them happen, and I'm like, man, I could have done, I could have written something like that. Maybe I'm not, I'm not, I don't suck that much. I got some, I'm good at something a little bit, right? Because I kind of suck at everything, but sometimes I think like I'm kind of good at something, I think, but maybe not. A professional. So then CM Punk comes out. I love that he just looks at MJF, I guess, and leaves, which is interesting. But you know how people really wanted the promo battle. So I felt like not only was it like an insult to MJF, and it made sense in a way, but people kind of were like, oh, man, I wanted to hear the promo battle. Now, this was fucking hilarious what happened next. Let's listen to this. Because I am the biggest... And I am the baddest guy in AEW. So, Darb, say win. <laughs> also, don't forget your skateboard. I like turtles. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking hilarious, dude. I'm sorry, but that was fucking hilarious. I like turtles. <laughs> fucking, he does look like that guy. Uh, he even laughed at that right there. Darby Allen, man. That's fucking... They just shit on him. Yeah, screw it. Let's do it. Man, he sucks. On the mic, he just sucks. Yeah, screw it. Let's do it. What the fuck? 
What do you mean, yeah, screw it? Screw it because... What do you mean? Like, what do you mean by, like, yeah, screw it, let's do it? Like, screw it, like, there's three of you and I'll still wrestle one of you? Or screw it, like, screw what you said, I'm going to wrestle all you? Or, like, screw it, like, okay, I'll wrestle Billy Gunn. Looks like my little lass oh, no. needs a shave. He sucks on the mic, but he has so much charisma. Fantastic today. It always is. They are original. They never copy WWE and they are fantastic. I'm live now with Dadila. Come and watch me as Steve Callen. <coughs> Sorry, Joe had to do a cheap plug. Thanks, Joe. All the blacks must die. As oh. We're going to have to. We had to blank that out. I'm sorry. You can't be. You can't be racist here. You fucking piece of shit. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to send your IP address to all to the to my BLM friends so they can come get you. Ku Klux cunt. Ku Klux. Ku Klux Callan. Scumbag. So, you know, Darby is uh, it's like, screw it, man, whatever. And then he like looked away. It was really bad. Um, and it was like he clearly wasn't. I don't know why he was looking away. Also, don't forget your skateboard. Like he sort of like looked away, like screw it, man. Like like he was gonna walk out, then didn't walk out, and turned right back to Sh Shivani, and then they faded away. And it was like, why didn't he just turn and walk away so they could have gotten the shot? Like he walked away. Or it was just really it was bad. Darby is not that was not good with Darby. Um They have to figure out what Darby is. Like I like screw it, man. Like it's just like what? Why didn't he say nothing? Why didn't he say nothing? Like or why didn't he say something crazy or Um, poetic maybe, or maybe just don't say anything. But it just, um, you know, I, I dealt with guys like that all my life and obviously the apple doesn't far fall, uh, fall far from the tree, um, with the three of them. Guys like that that like to talk so much are usually compensating for something. And I'm going to expose what, whatever the fuck to the world, or I'm going to go out there and beat them up, or... Listen, I got Billy Gunn. He's a legend. He, you know, him and his kids can make fun of me all they want. But I have everything to gain, and he's got everything to lose. You know? Something like that. Or um, Billy Gunn can laugh. His sons can laugh. But I'm going to go out there and I'm going to hit him with the coffin drop. Right in front of his kids or right in front of his sons. Something like that. Or just like, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. I mean, let's do it would have worked. Screw it was like, what? I, don't know, I guess he's emo, yeah. I mean, but I don't know. I think I think it would have been better for him to just be looking and then cut. He doesn't say anything. Like he's just looking at them, like yeah. Because if he just looks at him, that's like, what's he thinking? What's he gonna do? You know, like I just say, like when they act like dildos, I like turtles. Uh, I think it's better to just zoom in on Darby and Darby to be like. Just staring, like, okay. That's it. You can look at Tony. Tony can say, like, you have anything you want to say, Darby, and Darby can just be like, and just walk away. Now you don't know what's going on. Is Darby hurt by this? Is Darby going to use it? What's he doing? He's mystical. He's mysterious. Kind of. But him being like, screw it. It was just, it was weird. I don't know. That, that, I get it. 
It's the whatever, like, whatever. Like, uh, I get that. So maybe it's okay because that's, like, him. You know what I mean? Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> but uh, it was just kind of strange. And I came out thinking I love the I love turtles thing. I like I like turtles. Like, that was fucking hilarious. Um. Or it, or I mean, even if Darby said like that was pretty good, that was pretty funny actually. But he won't be laughing soon. <laughs> that sort of thing, I would have, I would have been down for that as well. I would have been down for almost anything, except what he did. <laughs> But that's just me. A little criticism there. I liked everything the guns did, though. I thought they were great. But Darby's reaction was... Sucked. I thought. My opinion. Love Darby, though. But Darby is so likable that he gets away with this. He gets away with these sort of empty promos or weird mystical punk promos that don't seem to mean anything. Or if they do mean something, we, I just don't get it. But they're they're either they're deeper meaning... Or they're no meaning or whatever the fuck. So <laughs> he goes, Tonight you die. <laughs> fucking Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh the acclaim come out with a fucking fire rap as always. Love it. And they had a pretty good tag team match. This might have been one of their best tag team matches in AEW. Obviously, they're against Dante and Leo Rush, which is a fire team. Um, so they helped them a bit, but this was good. This the crowd was the lo- almost the loudest it was all night for this match for whatever reason. There's a few little promos and a few little things that I'm skipping out on here, but in the end I'm going to skip out on it because I you know, I'm just not going to go back and catch everything cuz I didn't I didn't keep the best notes tonight. You know what I mean? Not the best notes tonight. I like turtles. Fuck. Malos y tan patéticos que ni así pudieron. Penta says, FTR, stop your crying. On more than one occasion, you tried to cheat to win, but you're so pathetic and you suck so bad that you couldn't even get the job. I love that. I love that their manager guy, whatever his face is, is like. An annoying, like, frat boy from, like, Revenge of the Nerds or something or not or whatever. Like, Penta says that you smell like poopy and your mama eats your diaper and your mama has to change your diaper for you still. So guess what? We're coming down there and we're going to beat your ass. That's what Penta says. Like the guy in Back to the Future when they're making fun of George McFly and then they get distracted with Marty and they're like, hey, check out this guy's life preserver. Thor thinks he's going to drown. That's what he's like. He's like the fourth fucking guy in a posse that's fucking annoying. Like, <laughs> like I don't know, man. The guy, at first I thought he was ridiculous. And now I like, he's kind of like Harvey Whippleman-ish. You know, I got to give him credit, man. He's a guy that no one expected to be doing this. He was just there to be the Spanish translator announcer guy. You know? And he ended up, being able to slide into this manager role on top of doing that. And he's kind of wearing a couple of different hats and, you know, he's just, he's pretty good. It's weird. People say the Penta says phrase, you know what I mean? Or say that like it's caught on a bit. So I get, I give him credit, man. Alex Ibrahantes or whatever the fuck his name is. I don't fucking remember. And then Jay lethal comes out and we get a dose of Jay lethal, baby. You know, he comes out, you get the little fucking uh, pomp and circumstance, macho man throwback uh, stinger at the beginning and then into a regular song, I think. A little un- a little weird, though, because when people heard that, I think they thought, oh, is he coming out as macho chismo or whatever the fuck he was? What was his name? Macho chismo or whatever the fuck it was when he did the macho man shit? <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, your main event tonight set for a one fall or... 
Jay, Jay Lethal's logo, by the way. Jay Lethal's logo looking like a fucking create a team in Madden 2002. Like, <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. So a little bit, you know, I, thought, I think some people thought he was going to come out like fucking crazy. And he really just came out bald with a, a symbol thing. But listen, I absolutely love Jay Lethal. And this was nice. I like this match. He put over the young guy. Coming in with that name and that steam. What a fucking great deal. Love Jay Lethal. Well, I thought the match was good. The anticipation was awesome. Uh keep you know keeping me pretty uh pretty hyped to see uh Jay Lethal main event in AEW show. So pretty good, man. And all in all tonight, man, they had a pretty good match. I enjoyed everything for the most part. And um, I I would say that I'd probably give AEW a I'd probably give them a seven tonight, maybe a six five, six five or a seven. I'm not a hundred percent on that, on how I feel, but I, it was a pretty, it was a, it was a nice night, you know, a nice night, some good stuff on the promos, pretty decent. Maybe a 6.5. I give tonight, I think, a 6.5 out of 10. You know, a, a nice thumbs up. 6 out of 6.5 out of 10. And I may be being a little bit... Black Machismo, that's what it was, right? The, the match was great uh, with Sammy Guevara, Jay Lethal. Um, maybe it's a 7 tonight. I don't know. You know, the tag team match was really pretty good. Fans seem to like it. Daniel Bryan had a little match that was kind of meaningless, but it was, well, no, it was it was meaningful, but the match wasn't you know any nuts of the Evil Uno, but it was just meaningful. So, you know, um, this is a rough one, and and not that point five makes a big difference, six five or seven, but hmm, we got to see I- Ishii. Ishii tonight, and I love Ishii. Um, I thought the butcher looked awesome. Like again, like I said, he looked like Jake the Snake, Stone Cold, fucking Sid. Oh man, MJF had a fire promo. I mean, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel bad giving it a six five almost. I feel like it's got to be a seven, maybe. Not that it matters. It's somewhere in there to me, a six five to seven. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna say. I'm, I don't know if I can do it. Fuck it, I'll give it. A, I'll give it a six point five, because I don't think any matches blew me away. But I thought they were good. They had some solid matches. Like a couple of matches were just throwaway whatevers. You know, six out of tens. You know, Jay Lethal's match with Sammy Guevara was too short, but it was what it was. And seven, I'd give it a seven five probably. Seven five, seven eight. Round it up to eight. Give it a seven five though, because I think mean, I think there's a lot better matches at an eight. Shit, man. So I don't know. I'll go seven point five. No, yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna go six point five. Yeah, six point five. But a, a really good, a really nice show tonight. I thought it was nice. You know. S- 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 super chat. Party! What's up, baby? Oh, yeah? Greetings from Colombia. I left America. Pro wrestling is fun here. We can go to the movies and watch it at a private showing. Really? Joe was up, Gringo Loco. What's going on, man? Como esta? Muy mal. Buenas noches. Yes. I am a crazy white guy. Crazy white boy. Thank you, Moss Blaze. You Moss. You Moss Blaze. Moss Blaze, what's up, man? Yo, man. It's good to see you, bro. How you doing? Mr. Friggin' Moss Blaze. 
Hit that like button down below, guys, if you can. Um, I think I'm running out of steam. I think my being up at 5 a.m. is finally uh, kicking in on me. That's like, woo. God damn it, man. Buenos noches. Going to bed, I think. How are you guys doing? Good to see you, though, Moss Blaze, huh? Miss, dude, Moss Blaze. You sexy beast, Moss Blaze. I lick you up and down, man. Es bueno verte de nuevo. Moss Blaze. How you doing, brother? How are you, Moss Blaze? Como va tu dia? It's been a little bit, brother. Been a little bit. Tengo mucho. Tiempo sin verte. Keep it wet. Tu madre. I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, I'm just reading the chat a little bit. I'm trying to go through the chat, reading the chat. Uh, Joe, do the... I am the Undertaker. Vince, I will walk through the fires of hell to kill you, Vince McMahon. I have been brought back to life by Paul Bearer. Uh, why did I let the fires of hell burn in my soul? Rest. <laughs> oh, bro. In peace. Rest in penis. You remember this one? <laughs> what the Undertaker should have told Vince McMahon. Hello. Hello, Mark. Mark, I've, uh... I've got a great idea. Vince, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm in the middle of masturbating. Well, understandable. Understandable, Mark, but uh, I've got something kind of big. I want you to wrestle Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 30. Well, Vince, that sounds like a hell of a plan. And I'm going to kindly oblige. Well, uh, Mark, that's great. You know, that's great. But there is, uh, there is something else. Uh, you see, I want, uh, I want the streak to end at WrestleMania 30. Vince... Call me back when you're not being a douchebag. No, Mark, 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 wait, wait. Mark, uh, <laughs> I, uh, wasn't joking. I want you to, uh, I want you to drop the streak to the beast incarnate, Brock Lesnar. Now, Vince, I've known you for a lot of years. This sounds completely retarded to me. But if you want me to do it, Vince, I will do it. <laughs> that's great, Mark. I knew you'd be on board. I knew you'd be on board, Mark. And that's why I told you I went ahead before and I already told Triple H that uh, he's going to do it. It's going to shock everyone. People in the crowd, people at home, you're gonna build up Brock Lesnar to be the most dominant champion that WWE has ever seen. Vince, uh, while I do agree to do the deed, you have to do something for me. Oh, you name it, Mark, you name it. 
Anything for the Undertaker. Vince, I want you to suck my dick. Well, that's what The Undertaker should have told Vince McMahon. And it was, uh, what a flashback there to that video from 2014, if you can believe it. Um, you know, that video only got 1,800 views. It's actually private. I got to unprivate it. I don't know why it's private. Man, it's hard to believe that was, fuck, man, that was seven years ago? Hard to believe. Seven and a half years ago? No, not that long ago. Seven years ago. Not even seven years ago, but it's close. What a flashback. Vince, ah, I never knew that Linda wanted me to become the undisputed World Wrestling Federation champion. And if Tony Khan wants The Undertaker in AEW, then I will join AEW as the Reaper. Imagine if the, imagine if the Undertaker joined AEW as the Reaper. <laughs> That'd be crazy, bro. The Undertaker joins AEW as the Reaper. Oh my god, bro. That'd be crazy. It comes out like this. Welcome to <laughs> oh my god, it's him. I don't believe it. He's here. Good God, he's here. In AEW. I have come to AEW for one reason. I will always rise and my Enemies will always rest in peace. The Reaper's here in AEW. He's come from under the ring to the depths of hell to attack Kenny Omega. And in full gear, I am gonna bury Kenny Omega alive. I don't know. <laughs> the promos for that, I mean, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get scared. Get scared. All right, guys, I had fun tonight. Thanks for being here, hitting the like button. Everybody else support the show. Thank you so much, especially to Soundwave92 with the $29. Uh, dollars. Coming in hard, wet, and fast and wild. Thank you, sir. Everybody else, uh, keep it wet, man. We're out of here. Keep it, uh, keep it whoopee. Keep it whoopee. See you guys tomorrow, uh, Friday night. Friday night, monetize this right here, 11 p.m. You know the deal. I'm going to get wet. We're going to find out if Jake's alive and is the new Monetize This Championship here. Friday night, find out. Plus, I bury everybody. Friday night, Monetize This. Let's go. So, 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 super Chat Party. Oh, yeah? The show's almost over, but great review, Joe.
haven't been able to catch up with the shows recently except for Full Gear. Thank you very much, Furry Balls. I'm glad you caught Full Gear, though. You got to watch that one, man. It was a pretty good show. Really good, really good show. I thought it was a pretty good show. It was just too long, too many matches. That's my only thing. But other than that, I mean, hey, it's a good show. I appreciate it. Thank you, Furry Balls, for the money, man. I appreciate that very, very much. Thank you so much, buddy. Love you, dude. Love you guys. Thank you. Thanks for supporting me on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. If you want to see the shows continue, keep going and get thousands of episodes of bonus content on Patreon and uh, keep my shows alive. Think about becoming a patron. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. You can use the app on your phone or on your desktops or whatever you want to do with it. It's crazy. And I will see you probably tomorrow for a video or two. And then Friday night for Monetize This. Good night.